In this video, we'll check out an optimization problem. This is a pretty typical problem. You'll find variations of this in most calculus textbooks. And in this one, what's described is that we have this piece of wire right here. Uh, we know that it's 12 inches long. And what we're going to do is we're going to bend the wire to make a circle, to make a square, or we're going to cut the wire and we're going to make both a circle and a square. What we want to do is we want to figure out where we should make the cut or what we should do in order to achieve the minimum possible area enclosed and the maximum possible area enclosed. With optimization problems, the one thing that I notice people struggling with quite a bit is that <coughs> they have a lot of information provided and more often than not, none of that information is an equation, is a formula that you need to find the maximum or minimum for. And so the, the difficulty is trying to come up with that on your own. We're looking to find the maximum and minimum total enclosed area. So what we need to do is we need to write down an equation for total enclosed area. What we're going to assume here is, is I'm going to assume that we're going to make both the circle and the square. Uh, and if I'm making a square out of this piece of wire, uh, I'm going to say that each side of the square is x inches long. And the area of that square is going to be x times x or x squared. Uh, if we're making a circle, we know that the radius of that circle is going to be what we use to find its area, and the radius of a circle is going to be found by taking pi r squared. So this would be the total enclosed area. Now, what's not necessarily great about what we just wrote down is that it depends on both x, the length of a side of the square, and r, the radius of our circle. We would like to be able to have this equation, this formula, depend only on x or only on r. What you can use to achieve that goal is this. You only have so much wire to use. You have 12 inches of wire that you're going to use, and you're going to use all 12 inches to either make the circle, make the square, or cut it to make both. So what I'm going to say is this 12 inches better be equal to uh, four x's, right, the length of the, of the distance around the square, the perimeter of the square, uh, plus the circumference of our circle, and the circumference of a circle would be found by taking 2 pi r. So what you can do with this expression right here, what you can do with this equation right here, is you can either choose to solve it for x, or you can solve it for r, and then you're going to be able to substitute that result into this equation, and you're going to have an area formula that either just depends on x or just depends on r. You can go either route. What I'm going to choose to do here is I'm going to solve for x. So if I'm solving this for x, I'm going to subtract 2 pi r from both sides. Uh, I'm going to have to get rid of that 4 that's multiplying the x, so I divide by 4, and I end up with this as what x equals. So I can go to my area formula here and I can replace x with the quantity 12 minus 2 pi r over 4. I still have to square that so I've just replaced x with what we're saying x is equal to and we still have pi r squared is the other term of our area formula. Now what we want to do is we want to find the value of r now that gives us the maximum area and the minimum area. What you might be a little concerned in is the fact that we haven't really handled either of these situations where we're making just a circle or just a square. What I've been doing this whole time is I've been assuming we're going to make both. Well, if you think about it like this, the smallest value that r can take on is 0. So 0 has to be less than or equal to r. If r is 0, you know, if 0 is here, we're using all of the wire to make the square. And if r is its maximum possible value, if we use all 12 inches of wire to just make the circumference of the circle, just make the circle, uh, we're going to have the situation accounted for where we are only making the circle. So if we divided uh, both sides by 2 pi, what we get is we get 6 over pi. So r would have to be between 0 and 6 pi. If r is 0, we're making just the square. If r is 6 over pi, we're making just the circle. The maximum and minimum value of an equation can occur at endpoints uh, of the variable that's within that equation. So we might have the max or the min occur where we just make the square, or we might have the max or min occur where we just make the circle. We'll just have to keep that in mind when we wrap this up. What typically happens in a calculus optimization problem is you're going to have your maximum and or your minimum occur at a critical number. And a critical number is a place where your derivative is equal to zero or where your derivative is undefined. So I'm going to take the derivative of a with respect to r at this point. I'm not going to, f I can't distribute this exponent. I could simplify this, I could FOIL this out. Uh, I'm just going to use a little chain rule here. 
So my outer function is this set of parentheses being squared. I'm going to multiply by the exponent, subtract one from it. The inner function is going to stay here. And then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of that inner function. Uh, this inner function be, can be rewritten as two separate terms, uh, 12 over 4, which would be a 3, and the derivative of that would be 0. And then negative 2 pi r over 4, which is really negative 1 half pi r, and the derivative of negative 1 half pi r is going to be negative 1 half pi r to the 0, or just negative 1 half pi. Derivative of the second piece, uh, we're going to multiply the pi by the exponent and subtract 1 from the exponent. Here's our derivative. This derivative is never undefined. We don't have r's in denominators. So the only thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set this equation equal to 0 and solve from there. I notice a 2 here and a 1 half on that first term. Uh, I, can, I am now going to go ahead and do 12 divided by 4, get 3. But I also have to remember the 4 is dividing this term. So that's going to give me negative 1 half, negative 2 fourths reduced to negative 1 half pi r. And then I have this negative pi that I'm about to distribute into that. And if I distribute negative pi into that, I'm looking at 0 equals negative 3 pi plus 1 half pi squared times r plus 2 pi r. Now, if you're going to do this without a calculator, uh, it's going to get a little bit ugly because you have these pi's floating around here. But what you can do is you can go ahead and you can add 3 pi to this side. You can factor r out of these two terms, and that'll give you 1 half pi plus 2 pi inside a set of parentheses that's being multiplied by r, that common factor between these two terms, uh, and then divide both sides by this quantity, and you have, oops, and I forgot my square on my 1 half pi, I just forgot to carry it down from here to there, uh, 1 half pi squared plus 2 pi. And that's going to be our value of r that makes the derivative 0. I'm going to do a little bit of work on the calculator here, and then we'll catch up in a minute. OK, so we should be about ready to wrap this up here. What I did was I approximated this on the calculator, and I got about 0.84 inches. Uh, so basically what that means is my derivative is equal to 0 at the r value of 0.84. I know r can't go beneath 0 or above 6 over pi. right? We said that. Uh, up here, I believe, right? This little interval is just off the top of the screen behind my calculator now, right? R has to be between those two values. The only time the sign of the derivative of A with respect to our radius uh, can change is as we cross the value of 0.84. I picked a number over here, I picked 0.1, and I evaluated my derivative. I, I evaluated the simplified form of the derivative uh, with an r value of 0.1, and I got a negative value for my derivative. And then I also evaluated it at 0.9, which would obviously bet be between 0.84 and 6 over pi, and I got a positive value for my derivative. So what does this tell you? Well, this sign chart tells you that your area is going to decrease as r ranges from 0 to 0.84, and then it's going to increase as r ranges from 0.84 to 6 over pi. Uh, that does tell us that our minimum area occurs when r is 0.84. So the minimum area is going to happen when r is about 0.84. Uh, what about the maximum? Well, this is a little bit trickier here. Uh, we might have the maximum occurring when we only make the square and r is 0, or when we only make the circle and r is 6 over pi. So I'm going to do a little bit more work on the calculator, and then we'll be back to finally wrap this up. Okay, so what I did on my calculator there was I evaluated my area formula. So not my derivative, but my area formula. And I used the one that just depended on r, so that was this formula right here. I evaluated that at a radius of 0 and I got 9 square inches for the total enclosed area. And why, when I evaluated that formula at a radius of 6 over pi, I got 11.45 uh, square inches. So the max area happens when we just make the circle, and we use all uh, 12 inches of the wire to make the circle, and we're not making a square at all. So use everything to make the circle, and you can achieve an area of 11.459 square inches. Uh, use a radius of 0.84, and you can achieve your minimum area. The only other thing that you'd want to do, and I have to cut this video off here, uh, you would have to figure out where you would need to make the cut. So if r is going to be 
figure out what your circumference of the circle is going to be. So 2 pi times 0.84, and that'll tell you where to make the cut, hopefully.